Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Project Cars 3. Time to review it. Give you my thoughts on it, my first impressions. And let you know how the game is. Should you buy it? Should you not buy it? Okay. First off, let us address the elephant in the room. Which is the fact that it's called Project Cars 3. This is going to cause... Well, I say it's going to. It already has caused... A ton of issues and to be honest I agree with the criticism that it shouldn't really be called Project Cars 3 it should have really gone with a different name because of of course the whole new direction that this game has gone down compared to Project Cars 1 and 2 so this is a very very different game Project Cars 1 and 2 very much simulators this is much more of an arcade game very very different feel uh, so I would say yes it should have been given a different name and if anything it feels more like Drive Club 2 for anyone who played Drive Club 1 which is actually not such a bad thing and I'll go into this because I think that yes if you're expecting a simulator based on Project Cars 1 and 2 then you're going to be disappointed and maybe quite rightfully so but for this review I've tried to be impartial um, objective I've just gone in treating it as its own game in its own right and I think there's actually a fair few positives to come out of it but related to the fact that it's called Project Cars 3 one thing that you would say is that a lot of the things are a bit of a downgrade compared to Project Cars 2 at least so I mean there's less locations less tracks less actually no more cars but less locations less tracks uh, the graphics um, aren't quite up to it aren't quite as good and like the car models aren't quite as good but what i would say is that when it comes to the physics yes they are arcade that doesn't necessarily mean it's a worse game than project cars 2 because of the physics it's just a different game so let's i mean let's talk about the handling and the physics because obviously that's a very important thing it's probably one of the most important things about this whole game like i said it's an arcade game but it still has elements of sim I would say and that was best found out for me whilst doing this rivals event around Laguna Seca where you could really push and try to work out exactly what works and what doesn't work in this uh, Ford Mustang GT car and even though yeah it looks very arcadey you can really push very late on the brakes and etc and go quite quickly into the corners and break later than you normally would on a sim there's still things like you have to really control the oversteer otherwise the car will begin to slide and that's really evident in the slower cars like when i was driving the Mitsubishi Evo in the beginning of the career mode and also you've got to be very delicate on the power you've got to, you've got to time all these things right so you know to be ultimately quick you still have to be quite precise it's not like you can just throw it around every corner like as if it's outrun it's not quite like that as i said it feels very similar to Drive Club and that's not actually such a horrible thing because I actually really enjoy Drive Club. Now there may well be many of you who have never played Drive Club so you, <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, fair enough. On a scale, let's say on the one end you've got Sim, you've got iRacing, etc. of course, uh, R-Factor. Up that end of the scale. Then a little bit further down, towards Simcade-ish, you've got Gran Turismo, then Forza. This is a bit further towards Arcade. This is, yep, Drive Club. PGR maybe you could say grid not grid grids are a lot more arcadey than this I'd say and so around about drive club around about PGR not as sim as Forza I wouldn't compare this game to Forza I know a lot of people have compared it to Forza saying it's a worse version of Forza but I don't think it's really anything like Forza to be honest uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of where this sits on the sim slash simcade slash arcade scale and i think the overall theme of this review is really just going to be look don't expect a sim because it isn't a sim it's just it's just not a sim if you like arcade games then there's a very good chance you'll like this if you like sims only then yeah you're not gonna like this probably another note about the handling physics it feels quite understeery i would say and uh, definitely have to turn in like way earlier than you'd think, especially on that Laguna Seca time trial, just turning in. But it does feel good when you get it right. It's not easy to get right. 
I wouldn't say that this is going to be a game that you can just pick up and be absolutely ballistically quick within five seconds. It will take some time to really get very quick at it and set the set the top times. As for controller and a wheel, I would say both work well. I, I predominantly want to play this game on a controller. It feels like more of a controller type of game. That's why I'm playing in Chase Cam with the controller and it feels fine to me. Didn't have to change any of the settings or anything. Um, on a wheel, I jumped into a race at Nürburgring in the McLaren. Um, did have to just adjust, or sorry, calibrate the wheel very quickly. But after that, given this, given this race a go, and this was my very first race on a wheel, I actually felt fine. It, it felt pretty decent on the wheel. You could say that on the pads controller, it feels a little bit clunky, a little bit heavy, but in on the wheel, it didn't really feel like that. I, uh, maybe I could turn my force feedback up to 100, but it didn't really feel too bad. So I would say controller, wheel, both very playable. I'd prefer it more as a controller game. I'm not sure which one is quicker, but looking at the leaderboards, there does seem to be a mix. Depends which leaderboard you look at, I guess. Other things in terms of handling physics, um, some of the curbs felt a bit dodgy. Um, I was doing this Monza race, and every time you get on the curb, it would really slow you down, which felt a bit strange given that this was more of an arcade game. It felt like they wanted you to stay off the curbs, whereas I would have felt that on an arcade game they wanted you to use the curbs, but there you go. Uh, also, track limits. For the most part, they were pretty good. I mean, it's just keep two wheels within the white line. And of course, when the AI smash you wide, you can get pushed into the wall and get a slowdown, or you can get pushed wide, get a slowdown. So there was some inconsistency there, but I suppose it's a deterrent. You quickly learn to not put yourself in the wrong position, like on the outside of people, so that you can't get pushed wide. Uh, so, that, so there is that. So overall handling and physics, yeah, not a sim, not a sim at all. I actually had fun with, with the physics. I actually think they're, for an arcade game, they're, they're not too bad. I think they're actually all right. Right, graphics. Now, yeah, graphics, where do we, where do we start on this? Certainly not that great, if I'm honest. I tried it on the resolution mode and on the graphics mode. I left it on graphics mode because I think the resolution was all right, but ultimately the graphics are average at best, I would say really not as good as you'd expect for you know the end of the ps4's life's lifespan um and yes i'm playing on some ps4 of course on on an ultra powerful pc it may well be a lot better but on the console which i think most people will be getting this game on it was all right but you know nothing special really the modes how does the game feel to play a uh, single player again i can bring up drive club here because it it just really reminds me of that the way that you, you fight through these races, the race length was about the same, and you know, trying to unlock the three challenges for each race it was actually good fun. You know, sometimes I like to think that I can just jump onto a game like this and I don't want to have to be too stressed out with, you know, racing my absolute best and set the best lap times of, of all time. You know, I, I jumped onto this single player, it was actually decent fun. It's not going to set the world alight, but I actually enjoyed it. You know, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad at all. And uh, there's a fair amount of time there you can spend in that single player. The AI are, they're all right. Um, you can turn up their aggression, you can turn up their difficulty, of course. They're a little bit inconsistent. Um, but then again, I'm not sure which game really does get AI quite right. Maybe a set of Corsa, but, but if you don't want to race AI, there's, of course, multiplayer. Now, I have had a few races. Um, all of the races, of course, were done before the release date, so the population isn't quite there. Also, the player base was still learning the game for the most part. But I have had some good races, actually, and I had this really good one against this Portuguese guy. And I think that once the population is there, and once people know what they're doing on this game, there can be, there can be some potential for some decent racing online. Uh, funny enough, I had this race on Monza, and we go into the first chicane and there was an absolute shadow realm carnage which was uh, really quite unbelievable i didn't quite figure out how that worked out everyone actually braked for the first corner so it kind of shows you that maybe there is some potential there and i, I like the, the way that it's kind of laid out so you have these uh, scheduled races a bit like gt sport where there's races every 20 minutes and there's six per day 
and they revolve around and so you can just pick one and go into those races and they're a decent race length actually maybe a bit too long you could say because some of the races i had the race would just um spread apart too much and then you know you're kind of on your own for a while but uh, if you can get a close race and hopefully when the player base is a bit bigger then there is more chance of that uh, then you could have some some decent races there and of course you've got the just the normal lobbies which also not very well populated but uh, it's hard it's hard to it's hard for me to really review the multiplayer right now i think there's potential we'll have to wait and see and of course i'll be making some videos on that in the in the near future so do look out for those rivals mode similar to multiplayer of course but of course you're on your own racing against ghosts and this is actually a mode i I found pretty fun, especially the uh, Ford Mustang rivals at Laguna. And the good thing about it was that they added like a limited amount of tries. So you've only got 30 Rival attempts to set a lap. And I actually quite time. like that. So it puts more pressure on each attempt. Of course, you can go away and practice in custom event or something. But then you have to deliver only on the 30 attempts where it really matters. And so that was actually quite a fun mode. Um, in terms of like the overall quality of the game... Okay, now I've said I've had fun with it, and I, I definitely have, right? But I would still say that there's not quite the refinement, especially on PS4, maybe it's not the same on PC. But I still had some glitches. Sometimes I would get the blue screen of death, it would freeze, or there'd be a weird graphical glitch with the lighting or something. So there's still things like that which haven't been quite smoothed over. And funnily enough, that is actually similar to Project Cars 1 and 2. So they have kept true to the brand in some ways. It wasn't absolutely um, game-breaking, uh, but it was quite frustrating. And it, it, I do think that they do need a bit more refinement, for sure. There's absolutely more work to be done, you know, just smoothing out those little things like that. In terms of just the overall feel of the game, um, there's been a lot of talk about it looking and feeling like a mobile game um i mean maybe yeah the, the menus you could say look a bit mobile -y. but at the same time look it's an arcade game it's it's not meant to be super super serious so t for me that's not i wouldn't say that's a criticism that i i would level at the game uh, the, the criticisms i would level at it would be the lack of refinement the downgrading amount of tracks the fact that they called it project cars 3 when it perhaps should have been something different and we'll have to look at multiplayer and also the graphics the graphics aren't particularly that outstanding um, but the multiplayer again we don't know so it could be good could be bad we don't know yet but that brings us to the end of the review really and of course if you have any questions then please do ask i've played maybe about 10 hours which i think is a fair amount i've tried every mode I tried a bit of everything. You might be thinking, you might be on the edge about buying this game. So if you have any questions, then please do just comment away and give me your thoughts. But overall then, let's, um, let's give an overall sort of verdict on it. And I'd say, if you can get over the fact that it's called Project Cars and sort of forget about Project Cars 1 and 2 for a second, then yeah, this game is it's good fun. I had some fun with it. And if you are a fan of arcade racing games, which has an element of sim about it. It's not going to set the world alight, but it's not absolutely awful at the same time. Will I be playing this in two years' time? A year's time? Probably not. But will I have a load of fun with it now for a couple of months? A couple of weeks at least? Yes, I, I probably will. So yeah, if, if you're a sim racer and you know, you're know you a fan of the realism and the absolute authenticity, then... Project Cars 3 probably isn't for you, but if you just want a quick, fun arcade game, which isn't too serious, doesn't take itself too seriously, which has absolutely average graphics, but could have a fun multiplayer, then yeah, it may well be worth picking this up. But I'd probably recommend, maybe, you know, if you're absolutely on the fence, then maybe wait until it's a little bit cheaper. But um, I'd say it's probably about a 7 out of 10 game and I think that's kind of reasonable but that brings us to the end of the review I hope you found it useful in some way please let me know let me know your thoughts let me know your questions and uh, well just thank you so much for watching as always everyone in the meantime if you want to follow me elsewhere Twitter, Instagram all that good stuff's all linked below 
and uh, if you're new to the channel then uh, welcome thank you for watching and thank you for making it this far maybe give us a sub as well that is it for me take care everyone have a good day stay safe out there and i shall see you next time goodbye